Well, to nobody's surprise, David Fizdale has been fired and the New York Knicks are looking for a new coach once again, just like they were in 2018 and 2016 and 2014 and 2012 and 2006 and 2005. Now, Fizdale is a bit of a unique case because he leaves the team with the worst winning percentage in franchise history, but it's also pretty easy to argue that he wasn't really the problem with this team despite their 4-18 record at the time he was fired. He wasn't perfect by any means and will likely struggle to find a new head coaching job in the NBA for next season, but the issues for this team, franchise, and organization run much deeper than just one average head coach. As evidence, look no further than their coaching history over the last 20 or so seasons. Since Jeff Van Gundy's tenure with the Knicks ended in the 2001-2002 season, there has been one instance of a coach staying employed with the New York Knicks for more than two full seasons, Mike D'Antoni, who lasted three and a half seasons. And so it's pretty clear at this point that the head coaching position, although it does need to be upgraded, isn't the real issue with this Knicks team, and they couldn't possibly be any further from true contention than they are as a team and as a franchise right now. So in today's video, I'm going to be unveiling my complete plan on how to overhaul this entire organization and franchise and attempt to fix the New York Knicks. So right at the start here, let's just address the elephant in the room. There are some massive organizational issues within the Knicks, and most, if not all of them, can be traced back to owner James Dolan. And to me, the first big point here has to be either he needs to sell the team or his level of involvement within the organization needs to decrease drastically. Because we can talk about all of the failings of the coaches and the GMs that have been there in Dolan's tenure as owner of the team, but I think the bigger issue that we need to point to here is his complete inability to hire the correct people for those positions. So essentially what it boils down to here is James Dolan has two options. He can continue to be a well-involved owner and they can continue to be an awful team, or he can take a step back and they can actually start trying to win some basketball games. Because we've seen that with this level of involvement, it's just not going to work with this franchise. Which leads us to my next point, and that is that there needs to be cohesion between the coaching staff as well as the front office, and there needs to be consistency there as well. And I would recommend just cleaning house, now that you fire David Fisdale, fire the front office as well, bring in a general manager and a head coach together that are on the same page in terms of their vision moving forward for this franchise. Look around at other organizations that have had success over the last few seasons, whether it be the Clippers or the Bucks or the Spurs or whichever franchise you think has been really successful from a front office and a coaching standpoint over the last few seasons. Look at assistance within their front offices, within their coaching staffs, and try and bring in some of those guys rather than just continually trying to retread former head coaches or former players that just retired. But it's not just that. It's not just just hiring the right people but as I said they need to have the same plan but they also need to have time to stick with it and actually see their vision through you cannot continue to fire coaches every two seasons and think that it's actually going to result in positive things for your team get a general manager that you're confident in get a head coach that you're confident in and understand that this is going to be at least a three-year process to build this team in the correct way before they're actually going to be something meaningful and sustainable and even if it doesn't look great right away you have to give them time to see this vision through all the way because it's not going to be some kind of quick turnaround there are no franchise saviors just sitting around waiting to come and join the new york knicks even if they went and got someone like masai ujiri and paid him a ton of money to come over from the raptors and they got this really good head coach if they're not on the same page and you're not patient with them it's not going to matter this is a team that has brought in guys like phil jackson and they've talked about bringing in these big name head coaches but at the end of the day if they don't have the time to actually see through what they want to do with the team and they don't have the confidence of the front office to do the things the way that they want to none of it's going to matter no matter who they are which brings us now to the section in which we're going to talk about some more specific roster things that this team can do for the way that their team is constructed right now to set them up for future success so the first thing that you have to do when you're in the situation that the knicks are in right now is identify the players that you believe are core pieces to your team, foundational pieces. These are guys that when you end up being good, you want them or you think that they will be 
on your roster still of the players that are currently on your team. And you can come up with whatever list you want to in terms of guys on this Knicks roster that you think can actually be good, productive players on good teams moving forward. For me, I've got guys like Frank Nilakina, Kevin Knox, potentially Mitchell Robinson, RJ Barrett, potentially Dennis Smith. And you can make your own list. It doesn't really matter, but you have to come up with a list of names that you know unless some kind of superstar trade becomes available, we're not moving these players. Everybody else might be expendable, but these are the guys that we're focusing on and are the focal points of our franchise right now and moving forward. Because when you look at their roster, there are so many potential trade pieces, and I feel like we're gonna get past the trade deadline this year, and most, if not all of these guys are for some reason still going to be on the roster. Players like Alonzo Trier, who had a good season last year, is on an expiring contract, and you have two options here. One, you can trade him before the deadline to a team that might need him, or you can attempt to re-sign him in the offseason to a deal that is fair and could be a nice trade piece down the road. But you cannot, you cannot overpay him just to keep him when you don't know if he is a foundational piece or not. And then you've got plenty of other veterans on the roster that are expiring contracts as well. You've got Marcus Morris, who I promise you a contender would be interested in, in terms of his $15 million expiring contract. He's a good player on the court, although he does have some issues offensively with being a bit of a ball stopper. He gives good size on the front court. He can make shots. Contenders are going to want him. And it's the added bonus of him being on an expiring contract that will allow you to take on salary. You can get a draft pick for Marcus Morris. Taj Gibson, not as much of a helpful player on the court, but a nice veteran presence. And again, an expiring contract with a team option this offseason that this team needs to move. And then you can even go further on down the list with players like Bobby Portis, who has a team option for this offseason, or Julius Randle, who does have two more years on his contract. But if you don't believe in him as a long term piece for this team, then he should be expendable as well, unless you think that they are a core piece trade them away for any kind of value because ultimately they won't matter to your team in a year or two when their contracts have run out. And in terms of like specific deals, we can do a Knicks trade machine video, kind of like we did the whole Pistons team. We can do an extremely long Knicks trade machine down the road. But for now, the important part is that they recognize that everybody other than their core players are expendable on their roster. Now to the next part of the plan, and this is so, so crucial because the best way for this team to build moving forward is going to be through the draft. And I'll get to that a little bit later in my next section. But the best way for them to build, in my opinion, is to take advantage of the thing that they have going for them right now, which is that they suck. They're not a very good team, and that's the best thing that the Knicks have going for them right now in terms of getting a high draft pick. But that doesn't matter if you don't have the development staff on hand to properly develop players. And that has to be priority number one, in my opinion. It doesn't matter how you get the players, free agency, draft, whatever. They're never going to reach their potential if you don't have a structure in place that properly develops players. And right now, I don't believe that to be the case because they have a history of drafting players that simply have not worked out. They've Some of them have been highly thought of before the draft, some haven't been, and they just haven't developed the way that people had hoped that they would. So again, go back to what I talked about in the first couple of sections in terms of hiring the right people. Look at organizations like the Clippers and the Spurs and the Bucks and try and pull some player development people from them to build your new player development program. Because again, regardless of how you get your players, if you want them to be any good, they have to develop. That's just the way things are in the NBA. Which brings me now to my last and probably most important point here. And that's that the Knicks need to stop focusing on free agency as their key team building strategy, at least for now, because I think it's been shown to be pretty clear that that's just not something that most players around the NBA are interested in. Yes, they got Amari Stoudemire, but they gave him a ton of money and they didn't really care about the injury issues. And 18 months in, his knees were completely ruined. Yes, they got Joe Kim Noah, but his salary is still on the roster because they had to stretch his contract. Yes, they got Julius Randle, but he's clearly a B-tier free agent. Some fans don't even like him anymore. And you could argue that now he's gonna be overpaid for the next couple of seasons. So this idea that playing for the Knicks and playing in Madison Square Garden has some kind of allure to players around the league is complete bogus at this point. Point, so move on to something else. And like I said, use your best asset right now, which is that you're a bad team. Get high draft picks, develop players, and focus on building your team that way. Make smart free agency decisions, not just splashy ones. That's probably the biggest issue with this organization is that everything is so about perception rather than actually making the correct 
tangible moves that are actually going to help the franchise. And I get that it's not so simple as just laying all these things out and saying, focus on young guys, don't sign big free agents, and overhaul your staff. I understand that it's not that simple, but other teams have kind of made it look like that is the case with the Clippers and the Nets, arguably the two biggest free agency winners of this offseason were laughing stocks of the league for most of their tenure as franchises in the NBA, but they overhauled their staffs. For the Clippers, it required a new owner. For the Nets, they brought in some smart people in the front office and in the coaching staff, and that brought them legitimacy as a free agency destination, as they were also building up teams that actually made sense around superstars that they could see themselves playing on these teams. And that's just not the case for the Knicks right now. Like the whole selling point of we have nobody on our roster, but you two or three guys should come play here anyway. It's worked one time and that's with the Miami Heat. And that's because those three guys were such good friends and organizationally, they were in such a good place with Pat Riley. So it's not a model that the Knicks are gonna be able to follow right now. And the frustrating part about this is they were actually so close to getting it right when they had Kristaps Porzingis on the roster, they actually got a high draft pick. They developed him properly, even though fans weren't super excited about bringing him in in the first place. They loved him afterwards. He developed into an all-star caliber player on his rookie contract, and they had an opportunity to sign free agents. And I really thought that was one of their big selling points this past offseason was if they still had Kristaps Porzingis, they would have been able to create a good amount of cap space to bring in one, maybe two all-stars. And that was their pitch along with their high draft pick. And then they traded away Porzingis because he wasn't happy and he didn't want to be there anymore. And that's the core of the issue. It's not just about bringing in the right staff. It's not just about bringing in the right players. It's not just about developing them. It's not just about stopping going after all these big time free agents. It's about building an organization and a franchise that players want to play for regardless of how you bring them in, regardless of how you get them. If they don't want to be there, then nothing else matters. And at the end of the day, maybe it does require an ownership change. That's what it took for the Clippers to be the team that they are now and it's a shockingly quick turnaround and that shouldn't be the expectation but maybe that's what it's going to take it's going to take James Dolan selling the team or like I said in the beginning becoming much less involved in the basketball part of this team but at the end of the day this is what I think would help save this team and I don't think they're beyond saving because the NBA is a is a league in which you can turn your team around relatively quickly again look at a team like the Clippers how quickly things went from this big scandal to now being in my opinion the title favorites this season it's possible but you have to go through a step-by-step -step plan you have to be patient you have to have a vision moving forward and you have to have everybody on the same page and that's really where it all starts for me for attempting to fix the Knicks. And there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video, and I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.